sorry about the awkward angle with my couch right here. There was really nowhere else to put the camera and I'm too lazy to go look for one, but uh, it's basically been like two years since I made my video about guinea pig noises or whatever and um, it actually got like decently popular so I decided to make another quick one and like I'm gonna try and stay a little more on the YouTube train. I don't really love YouTube. More like I don't really love myself on YouTube, like I'm a really bad actress and I also just really don't like like the vlog style where it's like, hey, let's try to make my really boring average normal life seem super exciting, but, and by the way, that was my best attempt at a bubbly sounding voice, so I'm gonna cringe pretty hard when I hear that played back, but anyways, um, basically it's easier just to share information and, you know, share pictures and videos of my pets and... Um, like cage setups and tutorials and things like that by video, so I figured I might as well sort of just post them here and um, try not to show my face as much as possible. But anyways, uh, I just thought I'd make uh, my first or technically second video a really quick one just about all my pets, introducing them. Um, because a lot of people think I have a lot more pets than I actually do, mainly because I take in a lot of rescues and then rehome them, and so... You know, there's always pictures of different pets on my news feed and things like that, so uh, people get confused. So here is a short, or what I tried to make short, video kind of clearing it up. And uh, hopefully you can look forward to more videos in the future, but I can't promise anything. I'm going to promise a little bit that I'm going to try. <laughs> All right, um, let's get started. So this is Barley. I got her in August as a rescue and basically took her in to try and rehabilitate her. Um, she did really well. I actually adopted her out and then missed her. And when I found out she wasn't working out so well at the home she'd been adopted out to, I got her back. And as you can see, I'm super excited to have her. So she's a keeper for sure. I mean, don't get me wrong, she is kind of a jerk, um, with a lot of attitude, but oh, look how cute she is when she chews. <laughs> um, I like her. A lot of people are kind of surprised about that, but I don't care. She is just so cute when she runs around, I couldn't resist. So, I like animals with attitude. So, um, there was an ad on Kijiji, and uh, all it said was Ruddy Abyssinian. But it was under cats, so I called just to see what it was all about, and that's how I discovered this breed of cat. So this is Freya. Um, I adopted her in the middle of the summer. She was eight, year old, eight years old, being given up because the family was going through a divorce, and she was attacking the son. Um, and she was unfixed, which I thought was probably a big part of it. But I kind of also figured out that the breed of Abyssinian is like... They're crazy smart, and the way they, like, bond to owners, like, the way she's bonded to me makes me realize, like, how hard it must have been for her to transition, like, from living with someone for eight years. Like, she was really nasty when I first got her. She would, like, attack me and just, she was nuts. Like, she loved me for one second, then, like, turn around and attack me. But um, now I get it because we have such a strong bond that must have been really traumatizing for her. So, um... I love her. She's like the sweetest cat. I can do anything to her. Like, I wear her as a scarf a lot of the time. She sleeps with me. Um, in the summer, I'm gonna start training her how to uh, walk. Sorry. <laughs> start training her how to walk on a leash, and I'm really hoping to be able to bring her more places. So, uh, whoever liked my last video, <laughs> would remember these guys as Twiggy and Twix all grown up. Um, Twiggy's on the right, or sorry, the left. Twix is on the right. Um, they've been doing great. I mean, uh, they've always been awesome. Like, they were three weeks when I got them, so they're not afraid of dogs or cats or anything. Um, they're friends with most of the animals here. The hedgehogs aren't really big fans of them because they follow the hedgehogs around being herd animals and the hedgehogs being solitary, I think find that annoying. So my old hedgehog, Bramble, who you may have seen in some of my other videos, used to like them. The three of them used to go around as a little herd and that was pretty cute. Um, unfortunately, Bramble actually passed away uh, just a couple weeks ago, which is why, sadly, she's 
not in this video, but, um, they're friends with the bunnies, um, they don't mind the dog, they annoy the cat a lot, but it's kind of funny, um, they have such personality, like, I've always been a huge fan of guinea pigs, I'll probably always keep guinea pigs, I've had guinea pigs since I was four, um, so of course I'm just in love with these guys, um, and all my friends love them, I mean, they're super friendly, they're walking compost bins, what more could you really want? Um, if only Twix could get out of the habit of standing on our feet when she wants food or attention, that would be awesome. But other than that, no problems at all. This big guy is Romeo, um, or this big guy's tail belongs to Romeo. <laughs> there we go. Uh, we've had him in the family for like 12 years, we got him as a rescue, they thought he was a girl, then his wife laid an egg. Unfortunately, Juliet passed away about five or six years ago. Romeo has vision problems, shedding problems, I think he's infertile, and he's just not the sharpest knife in the drawer, but he also just continues to live on like the old wise man that he is, so I don't know, maybe he's got some crazy secret to life we should all know about, but he's pretty awesome. Uh, well, a little bit quiet, but, uh, you know, he loves his mealworms, he loves to sleep, and, um, really he's just pretty chill. <laughs> uh, so I guess we'll start in on the hedgehogs. That's, uh, that's a bit more of a long story, mainly because I only had the one, who was Bramble, um, before I took over Hedgehog Lodge. Um, and so when I took over Hedgehog Lodge, um, a bunch of hedgehogs came with that, including some retired breeders. All but one of those were fostered out. Um, sorry, all but two. Uh, Ginger unfortunately died over the summer. She was pretty old. Hazel is Juno's mom, and uh, she's being fostered out. Uh, Juno you'll see later on in the clip. These two are uh, Pixie and Urchin. Here I am showing off Pixie. So Pixie and Urchin were actually ordered from Niagara, Falls, uh, Ontario, um, from Heritage Pets. They're amazing. I would more than recommend them. Um, so mainly I needed to introduce new blood into my breeding program if I wanted to get it up and running again. Um, the original owner had kind of started to downsize the breeding because she was getting ill and, uh, you know, just wanted to responsibly sort of taper things off, but I kind of wanted to start it back up again. So here's Urchin, um, he's the stud male. Normally he doesn't live here with me, which is why he's so grumpy, because, you know, we're not really bonded. Um, that's mainly like a, an insurance policy, so there are no accidents, and also I like for people to foster him because it gets, it basically allows for people who really can't afford a hedgehog otherwise to, or, you know, want to experience one before they commit to buying one, to give him a shot, and, you know, I like to spread the love, and I have so many hedgehogs. So here are uh, Pixie and Urchin a couple days ago. They actually uh, mated last weekend, or I hope they mated, so we should have babies within a month. Here's Juno. Um, so she's the last female that can be bred from the Hedgehog Lodge lines that Paulette started, and uh, she's had one successful litter, very successful actually, and um, that was just recently, so she'll be bred again in a few months time, probably more near the end of the summer actually. Um, she's very active as you can see, doesn't like to be held still. Um, she's a little shy, but she's a sweetheart. Um, so that's my breeding herd, and they're also my personal pets. Uh, the ladies are anyways. I try to keep it kind of the numbers low um, and foster out as many as possible because hedgehogs do need um, time, you know, for you to socialize with them or they will become feral. So. Uh, keeping them friendly, especially the females for breeding, is really important because the more relaxed they are with me, the easier it is to check up on their babies without them, uh, without them freaking out. And um, so that's always like a really good thing to have going on as a breeder. Um, uh, so these little clips of the babies I've been showing are from Juno's um, recent litter. They were super, super adorable. Um, all had a tiny bit of pinto because Urchin um, was the stud male. Um, he's been the stud male for Pixie's babies too. Um, likely he'll just, you know, continue on being the stud male until Pixie and Juno are 
to the point where it, they're on their last litter. Like, I don't want to breed them anymore after that litter, and then I'll keep holdbacks. And at that point, since Urchin would be the father, he wouldn't be the stud anymore. And so then I'll probably adopt him out um, and purchase a new stud. Um, and so he will probably be adopted out to his foster family if they want him. Uh, if not, you know, um, people can apply and things like that. This is a sweet, sweet video I've been saving for the very end. Um, I was lucky enough to capture that uh, one day, very, very quietly, obviously, when Juno thought she was covered up, maybe, by the newspaper shreddings, but wasn't. Um, be very careful when spying on hedgehogs and their babies, by the way. I don't recommend it unless you know what you're doing, um, because... If you traumatize the mother too much, she can turn around and kill her babies uh, as a result. So, you know, I I posted that with the utmost um, importance being placed on uh, cautious behavior when you're observing babies. Um, but anyways, that's uh, my hedgehog herd. Again, uh, a lot less than people think I have, but, um, you know, I like to get out there and meet as many as I can and help it you know, people out with, uh, any of their hedgehogs, um, rehabilitation and, uh, just general advice is something that I'm always open to giving. Um, but these are, these are the ones that'll probably be here permanently. I mean, it's hard to say when they're finished breeding if I'll be adopting them out, uh, once I have new breeders or not. It really depends on where I am with the other pets at that point, but if they do get adopted out, you know, to make room for the new breeders, um, they'll be going to somebody close to me who I'll be able to check up on them every now and then because I will miss them and I, I do love them a lot. And that's a really important aspect of breeding, um, you know, is to have a small amount or at least a small enough amount that you can love them all because that makes it fun and that's where, you know, the, the passion comes into it. So this is Gus, he's my dog, um, my best friend, my worst enemy, also my husband. Um, he's obviously a huge sweetheart. Look, he's playing with a cat. This is like my favorite video of him. It's from a summer or two ago at, down at uh, the wharf in Halifax. Um, and I mean, he's so great with all the pets here. Um, he's helped me to uh, assist in rehabilitating my friend's dogs, and, you know, if they've got some behavioral issues or they've adopted a new one from the SPCA, he's confident but really relaxed, um, a bit of a jerk, I mean, he'll, if you're sitting in his favorite chair, chair, he'll, like, bark at you and run circles until you get out of it, <laughs> um, but you know what, he's just a clown and, um, you know, I consider him, like, my therapy dog, even though I'll probably need therapy when I'm through with him, but, you know, um, he's a dog, and there's no such thing as a perfect dog, and I think he's the closest that I'd ever get to, you know, a best friend who was completely perfect for me, so I can't say enough good things about pugs. They're just, they're completely hilarious, and uh, everyone should get one. <laughs> well, um, that's all, and I mean it, uh, for now. <laughs> um, I'm gonna try and, like, Again, do more videos, um, focusing on dis different aspects of animal care, um, some different te techniques I use for rehabilitation, some fun videos, whatever. I'll try and update if I get some new additions, which is never uh, not a possibility. But um, thanks for watching, if anybody watches, um, <laughs> which I recommend you do, not because of me, but because my pets are so cute. Um, and that's not completely biased. Many people agree with me. Anyways, I'm gonna go because I hate filming myself and I find myself very awkward on camera. So, um, I don't know how to do one of those proper YouTuber exits. So I'm just gonna press the red button.